Francis now R was an award-winning journalist who spent much of her career covering this region um, in the Middle East. And, you know, as I, I said at the top of the show, that we're going to have as many people like Mickey on as possible, just to, because at the end of the day, as you know better than me, this is a story, and it always is, about people who are going through all of this. But from someone who has covered this in the past, this does seem, even for this region, to be much different. What is, what's your perspective as you look in? It's completely different. It's completely unprecedented. No one who's covered the region has seen anything like it, and no one, frankly, can remember anything like it taking place. This attack by Hamas, the sheer brutality of it, the imagery of you know the dead festival goers, the kidnapped young and old being taken into Gaza, is horrific. And I actually, when I first heard about this attack, messaged a friend of mine in Gaza, and she wasn't happy about what had happened. She wasn't celebrating anything. What she was doing was packing her grab bag for herself and her small children, because Gazans know that the minute Hamas does something, they are the ones that end up bearing the brunt of Israel's wrath. And Israel's wrath in this case is unlike any that we have seen in the past. They themselves have said it, and Gazans themselves who are living now under those bombs are feeling it as well. And one has to also realize, since your previous guest there was talking about bomb shelters, there are no bomb shelters in Gaza. There are no air raid sirens. What the Israelis tend to do is what's known as a soft knock, or they'll send a text message to residents and then residents know that they have minutes to evacuate. And by soft knock, I mean they will initially first launch a smaller missile to the rooftop of a building, warning that a larger strike is coming in. But they don't always do this. And so that same friend who I messaged later texted me saying that 20 members of her family, her relatives were all killed in a single strike. There's so much pain everywhere right now. How might the fact that hostages are involved if it all changed that, we've already had the threats uh, from Hamas today saying they will begin executing hostages if Israel, without warning, to your point, bombs civilian areas. Um, does that slow down the Israeli response? It doesn't seem like it would from what we've heard from the Israeli authorities today so far. And I actually really thought that maybe Israel would be a bit more measured given the risk that it could potentially be posing to its own people. But what we have heard from the Israelis so far is that, no, they're going to continue intensifying it, and that it seems, from the rhetoric at least, that they are willing to take on the responsibility, the risk of causing injury uh, to their own civilians. When we're also talking about this potential for a ground uh, invasion, one needs to realize that Israel has in quotations, one, because there really are no winners in any kind of situation like this. But Israel has in the past, in quotations, won its confrontations, you know, with Hamas, with Hezbollah and Lebanon, because it has maintained air superiority. This kind of an offensive, if it is planning a ground offensive, means that it is going to have to do door to door, building to building fighting in territory that is fully controlled by Hamas, where Hamas also right. controls and has an extraordinarily complex tunnel system, right. and an area that is also one of the most densely populated in the world. Yes, that makes it even more uh, challenging. And to your point, um, the border with Lebanon, something that they're also dealing with today. Are we Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.